You've heard me say it before. I'll say it again. Say it a hundred times. There's gold in them there pews. There's gold in them there pews. And the Lord wants to mine it. There is visions. There are ministries. There are blessings waiting to come forth from you. You can make a difference. Probably need a less monitor up here, brother. Turn with me in Ephesians chapter 2. As I talk about, it's not about you. I mean, say it. It's not about you. It's not about me. Right? Who's it about? It's about God. It's about Jesus. It's about Him. And when we get that message, when we catch the understanding, church is not about me. I don't go to church to get a good, feel good feeling. This is not about me. My Christianity is not about me. My life is not about me. In fact, my life is not my own. My life is not my own. Your life is not your own. The Bible says you've been bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your mind and in your body, which are God's. See, you you really do not have a right to your own body. I mean, who owns it? As a believer. If you have given yourself, committed yourself to Christ, who has control of your life? Jesus does, doesn't he? The Lord. And so we got to take, we got to understand that. We can't give ourselves to God and just kind of say, okay, Lord, bless my plan. Here I go. I hope it works out. We're going to have a good, no. God, what would you have me to do? It's really saying no to myself. No to my plans. No to my dreams. You understand what I'm saying? When we give ourselves to Christ, that's what a Christian is. Someone who it belongs to and follows the Lord. And we're not our own. It's not about us. In Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10. Look there with me. Well, let's go to John 2, 11 first. I, I, I squeezed one in there for me. John chapter 2. I like to Let's look in the scripture a little bit. Can you do anything with that feedback or I'm hearing it? Maybe no nobody else may not be. I don't mind hearing myself once, but twice is not good. John chapter two, look with me. Do you know what that picture is up there? You know what that is, don't you? Now what is that? Is it the sun? I don't think so, not with a dark sky like that. Oh, it's a cloudy day. <laughs> Oh, that's the moon, isn't it? John chapter 2. Think about that as we read together. Uh, well, let's read. Uh, this verse 11. We'll, this is the first of his signs. Jesus did at Cana in Galilee and manifested his glory and his disciples believed in him. This first miracle that Jesus did, turning water into wine, what did it say that Jesus did through this miracle? He manifested what? His glory. What is His glory? It's who He is. He manifested His person, His character, His nature, His goodness. He said, this is who I am. It's amazing to me out of something, an event that's, Relatively insignificant, it wasn't obviously to the wedding party, but to the whole world, this wedding wasn't very significant. But Jesus chose to manifest His glory for the first time at this wedding. And I think about each one of us and what God has put in our heart to do. And and sometimes we're looking for the grandiose, something big, something major, something You know, change the the world at one time, one day. And Jesus says, if you will just go in the small things and, and do what I've called you to do, 
And we, like this moon, are reflecting the glory of the Lord. We are reflecting His image. We are reflecting who Christ is. We know the, the moon has no light of its own, does it? The only light the moon gets or has is what it gets from the sun. And it's true in our lives. Yeah? The only life that we got, the Scripture says, in me dwelleth no good thing. There's no light in Randy. In fact, the Bible says there's evil. Amen? There's evil. There's sin. There's rottenness. There's decay. There's corruption. That's why you need Christ so badly. Amen? That's why the best of a human being is rotten according to God. Can you hear me this morning? There's no goodness that dwells in us. It's sin. But Christ comes and redeems us, hallelujah, from that sin and forgives us and puts his light in us. And we have the opportunity to reflect the glory of God in a small thing, in a, in a, in a party you go to, in a uh, meeting you go to. In a, in a meeting at the school, uh, if you sell something and, and you have a meeting, you gather people, you know, in that uh, opportunity to reflect His glory. On the job, reflect His glory. In the grocery store, reflect His glory. Jesus chose this relatively insignificant event. And it says, in this, Jesus manifested His glory. And his disciples believed in him. And that's what God wants to do. He wants to use you to show the world who he is so that they will believe in him. Jonathan, would you turn these uh, face lights down a little bit? And we have that privilege, that opportunity. Ephesians chapter 2 now. Let's look there together. Or you, uh, let me just go for the sake of time. But we are created in Christ Jesus. We are his workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus to do good works. Everybody hear me this morning. Why were you created? Why did he make you? He wants to use you. You were created. We are his workmanship. He formed you. He made you. He designed you. He gave you your personality. He gave you talents and gifts and abilities. Why? For good works. Good works. Sometimes we hear the word works and it, it, it kind of has a negative connotation, doesn't it? Because we sometimes go off on a, a tangent and, and think, well, I got to do, do, do. And we, we so works and performance oriented that we, we make the mistake of thinking all of these works and, and is there any favor with God and it makes me really look good. And so sometimes we may shy away from works, you know, I'm full of faith. But the Bible says faith without works is, is dead. Created in Christ Jesus for good works. Now, I guess I might follow my slides. But... Matthew twenty-two thirty-eight. Don't have to look it up here. Here's the, the two commands. The two commands. Love God and love others. Amen? Aren't you glad you made it simple? Aggies can understand this, brother. Hallelujah. I mean, we can follow this. I'm glad he narrowed down all those minute details and all of those commands, 600 some odd of them, said, hey, just do these two. And on these two hang all the law and the prophets. I think we can do this. Amen? And if we do this, this is how you make a difference. Love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. Well, who is your neighbor? Remember the story of the Good Samaritan. I submit to you today that your neighbor is the person that you know that has a need. It's not the person that lives close to you. That's not the neighbor. And, and he, that was clear, and he made that plain in, in the uh, story there of the Good Samaritan. It's who you rub shoulders with. It's who comes into your path, and, and whose path you cross, they have a need. You know what ministry is, don't you? Ministry is using the resources that God's given you to meet a need that he's shown you. Using the resources that God has given you to meet a need that he shows you. 
that He opens the door for you and makes it possible for you. Love God, love others if you want to make a difference. And I thought today I, I just kind of wanted to, to share and, and uh, I'm really uh, just my excitement and my enthusiasm. I'm motivated. Amen. Anybody else motivated? You know, a few weeks ago we had BBS. We had 30-something workers, 35 to 37 workers every night, the youth and the adults, had about 35, 36, at one time I think 37 children. And see, that's what I, I get excited about that. Those people are what? They're doing the ministry. They're making a difference. They're reflecting the glory of God. They're loving God. They're loving other people. They're showing their faith by their works. And I just want to commend you today. Amen. Give yourself a hand. Yeah, that's right. I, I, I'm, it's, it's not about us. And so we give of our time, our sacrifice. And we come to VBS five nights a week, you know, and we could do something else. How many of you know nobody has extra time? Nobody, if I asked you, said, would you take your spare time this, this week and come to the church? Well, Pastor, I don't have any spare time. And I know that. You know what we have? Some wasted time. I'm glad I got my steel toed, steel toed, steel toed shoes on this morning. A steel toed. We've got, there's part of our time that we're not using wisely. I can preach this to you because I'm preaching it to me. Amen? They'll never preach a sermon that they don't bite me and kick me and mm, get to me. I guarantee you, it's like money. You think you ain't got no spare money? That's a lie. You just chose to spend your money on this, 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 and this. Everything you bought in the last month, you didn't have to buy. Everything you did with your time, you didn't have to spend your time that way. Now, not all of it's bad. Not everything you spend is bad. I mean, none of it would be, quote, bad. But how many know good is not always God? And that's the same with our money. It's the same with our time. It's the same with our talent. All of our resources that God wants to use to bless us so that we can be a blessing to others, so that we can make a difference in other people's lives as we love God and as we love other people. And so I, I'm just... Reflecting on the last uh, few weeks and to see people excited and doing the ministry and making a difference in people's lives. Uh, yesterday, the Operation uh, Backpack, we call it, or, or giving away the school supplies. You know, Wednesday there was like 30-something, uh, even the children. Here come the children holding bags, you know, to get filled. The children participating. Amen? The youth participated. The adults participated. 30 of them here Wednesday night getting these uh, bags filled with school supplies. Isn't that a blessing? Do you know we made a difference in people's lives this week? Isn't that good? Some of you gave money. Some of you couldn't come. All of us can't do everything. And I don't, I'm not saying you better be at everything and you better do everything. You better not miss. That's not my message. My message is you better do what God has called you to do. You see? You have time to do it, and you've got the resources to do it if you'll submit to Him and do it. You might have to not do this and not do that and sacrifice this time. You just need to, we need to set some priorities, don't we? And if you don't have any time and you really, your calendar's full, I've got another message for you. Mm hmm. It's called quit doing. Some of the stuff you do. What did she say? Tyler? Did I hear what I, I thought I heard her here right here on the... She said you can preach that to yourself. I think I will. I tell you what, you can quit doing... Oh, here I am right here. 
You said it too loud. Yeah. But it's, I, I say this, you know why I know it's true? Because I, I know it's true. Mm-hmm. Because there, there are time wasters and there are time consumers. Some of it's stuff we ain't got no business doing. Some of it's stuff for good things, but we could be doing something else. And God wants us to, number one, here's the key. What was it? It's not about you. Your time is not your own. My time is not mine. My money is not mine. If we really believe that we're the Lord's, everything we got is His. And so we need to, uh, God, what do you want me to do in my life? Do you want me to be involved in this, 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 this? Oh, it's fun. I mean, people, da, 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 da. Where does that leave the church? I submit the church ought to be the second priority in your life. And by that, I mean the kingdom of God, the body of Christ, the church, His kingdom. Aside from your family, it ought to be the church. Church takes the back seat, second seat, third seat, fourth seat. When you get through this, 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 if I have any time, I'll give it to the church. And it's not about us. It's not about me. It's not about the building. It's about, what did you say? Him. It's about the Lord. And it's about His kingdom. And it's about loving God. And it's about loving other people. Can I hear a big amen this morning? Amen. Praise God. I just wish y'all happy and excited as I would. Now, I know you are. Uh, but, but everybody being involved, it just, I've just been so blessed by it. And then there's people behind the scenes. You know what the behind the scenes people are? The people you can't see? You know what holds this building together? It's the things you can't see. This sheet lock ain't holding the building together. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> it's them purlins and it's the, the foundation, it's the beams that go deep. It's things you can't see. It's like the people that are praying that may not be here. Amen? Amen. Christine's prayers. Amen? Amen. Bertie's prayers. Amen. Strength, the reinforcement. And see, if everybody just, this is my calling. To intercede. See, Christine wasn't here yesterday. Christine wasn't here Wednesday. But I guarantee you she's been praying. Amen? Now, her husband's a different story. <laughs> now, I don't mean he wasn't been praying. I mean, I don't mean he wasn't praying. But see, he's up here, uh, up here directing traffic. And I saw him about when nobody else, he, that, y'all didn't know he was up here. Y'all knew he was up here yesterday. Y'all knew he was up here Wednesday because he was doing his thing Wednesday night with the bags. He was doing his thing yesterday. Uh, but whatever day it was, he was up here fixing the oven, putting a new panel, computer panel, in the oven so we could cook. Nobody, anybody knew he did that? Hmm. But how many think that's pretty important? He tried to cook without it, without an oven, you see? And, and, and the beauty thing about the body of Christ is when everybody does their part, Ephesians chapter 4, the whole edifice grows and matures. I want you to know, I've just been so uh, proud and excited and enthused to see so many people. I told somebody we had 35 volunteers at VBS, they wanted to shoot me. That guy from the other church? <laughs> the brother told me, wake up. Yeah, we had 35 of them. But same amount of volunteers, we had kids. <laughs> what a blessing. You see, when everybody does their part and lives are touched, it's not about us. It's about us doing what he wants us to do, loving him and then loving others and being a blessing to other people. Uh, Chester, folding the bulletins. Now that that's important. And I don't see him come up here at eight o'clock or seven thirty. Whenever he gets here, I know that he's here. And bulletins are folded when I get here uh, a little before eight. They're done. Be Jonathan here. I don't know. 
And you know, that's what time we have to start paying him extra hours. So we don't, that's the thing. I mean, there's no, his pay's out of this world. Hallelujah. But see, everybody can do something. You see, you say, what, what could he do? What could he do? He do a lot. And I just, it just amazes me. Football's starting, right? Breaking up their teams. Texas Aggies down in Aggie land. We got Aggies. Oh, teamwork makes the dream work. Amen. Look with me in Romans chapter 16. Romans chapter 16. Tonight, we're having a uh, block party at the fire station in Dangerfield. Right out here off the, what's that street? Huh? Right off Highway 11, yeah. Highway 11. Watson Boulevard, that's what I think. Highway 11. And, uh, you know, we got, we need people to cook hot dogs. We need to, uh, people to serve in different areas. We got bounce houses. We got snow cones. We got this and that. We got basketball. We got, I think they're bringing volleyball net and stuff. And so there's an opportunity for people to come and be a part and love on some people, visit with some kids from the neighborhood and, and, and reflect the person of Jesus Christ in their life. Amen. Just another opportunity. I think about, uh, brother, brother Pat that, that coordinated the, um, touch a truck. You know, got me in trouble, but that's all right. We'll get over that. We everything's good though, by the way. Uh, by the way. By the way, if you get if you, if a helicopter comes to land, we learn something. You got to have a fire truck manned and uniformed fireman before that. Yeah, by the way, had a, a helicopter land here yesterday, had to touch a truck along with the uh giving away school supplies. So as kids were coming in and getting ready to get the school supplies, they can go out and visit with the fire truck and the ambulance and the bucket truck and the and the big uh, diesel rig Brother Mark had and 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 uh, get in there and, and play and just give the kids some to, to, to play. And uh, the pastor says, got a helicopter coming. I said, oh, cool, man. That's cool. That's cool. Well, we thought everything was cool. Well, I got here about 720 and here come the helicopter. And it kind of came coming from Tyler, I guess, and got over here, and it kind of hovered a little bit. And I thought, oh, I'm getting out of the way. Well, it took off. Yeah, here she goes. Well, it, it got on the radio when it got here. And it asked for the fire department. Where are you? Where are you? We're here to land. We're here to land. Well, they thought, oh, Lord, what's the emergency? What's the emergency? You know, where, what's happening? What's happening? Oh, we're coming to the touch of truck. You're not there? Oh, we're, we're, we're coming, but we're not there. Well, I can't land this thing. You, you got to be there. And so, everybody say bad communication <laughs> or lack of communication, uh, uh, assumption. And so, of course, we don't know the protocol. I don't know it. So we figured they had all that worked out. When the fire chief gets there, he said, <laughs> you know, he said, we need to talk. Well, he was serious. He said, it would be best done outside. Cool, you know. So he let me know, you know, you can't land them. But anyway, what did I say all that for? Thank you, Pat. Give Pat a hand this morning. Amen. Amen. For getting me in trouble. That's what I'm talking about. Man, I got a chewing out. And then, then we're having the, tonight, we're having the, the uh, block party at the fire station. And then when he got through chewing me out today, he said, what surprises you got for me tomorrow night? <laughs> I said, just wait and see, brother. Cornelius, just wait and see. But everything's cool. I mean, he wasn't mad, but he sure wasn't glad either. But I don't know. What, Romans 16. Romans 16. Let's look at this real quick, and I'm, I'm just about out of time. I mean, give me five minutes. For you. you know that trick. I wasn't looking. <laughs> look here, look here, look here. I commend to you our sister, Phoebe, a servant of the church, uh, that you may welcome her and the Lord uh, in a way worthy of the saints and help her in whatever she may need from you. She has been a patient of me and myself as well. Kind of going through this fast, but I want you to catch these people and what they did. Here's Paul closing the letter of Romans. Takes the whole chapter to say, 
You know, Paul didn't do this by himself. Paul didn't do this by himself. See how blessed y'all are today? Your best is not in you. It's in those. It's in your connection with those around you. See, Paul was a great man of God, wasn't he? Oh, yeah, everybody say amen. Paul had a lot of help. Paul was not great because of what he did by himself. He was great because of Phoebe, Obi. Greet Priscilla, Aquila, my fellow workers in Christ Jesus, who risked their necks for my life. To whom I not only give thanks, but all the churches of the Gentiles give thanks as well. Greet also the church in their house. Greet my beloved uh, Epinetus. See, my, this translation has them spelled different. I had these all memorized, pronounced. And I pick up this translation, and they're spelled different. That's a good excuse as ever. Who was the first convert to Christ in Asia? Greet Mary. Hey, got that. Mary, hey, I got one. Greet Mary. So it's worked hard for you. He said, I want you to get the picture of teamwork. We think of all that Paul did and all the churches that he planted and all that he did to further the gospel. He had a lot of help. And I'm sure this is not an exhaustive list. Uh, great Andronicus, Junia, my kinsmen, my fellow prisoners. They're well known to the apostles. They were in Christ before me. Great Ampliatus. My beloved in the Lord. Urbanus, our fellow worker in Christ. My beloved Stachys. Greet Apelles, who is approved in Christ. Greet those who belong to the family Aristobulus. Greet my kinsman Herodian. Greet those in the Lord who belong to the family of Narcissus. Greet those who workers in the Lord. Uh, Tryphene, Tryphena and Tryphosa. Greet the beloved Persis, who has worked hard in the Lord. Greet Rufus, chosen in the Lord. Also his mother, who's been a mother to me as well. Get that? See, she wasn't out there necessarily laboring in vent, but she was mothering. Paul had a mother. Hello, mothers. See, not everybody's out, you know, in, in, in the things that are seen. But there's mothers and there's grandmas and there's prayer warriors and people that are support people. Mm, Rufus. And Phlegon, and Hermes, Petropus, Hermas, and the brothers who are with them. Greet uh, Philologus, Julia, Nereus, and his sister, Olympus, the saints who are with them. Greet one another with a holy kiss, and all the churches of Christ greet you. Awesome. When you think of the, the books and the Pauline epistles and you think of Paul, don't you? I told you not too many weeks ago. I guess it was. Lord, it might have been a year ago. The name's of football. The head coach of the New England Patriots. Remember that? I left my Patriots at the office, so I can't name them. Just imagine. But there are coaches. They won the championship. Not because the head coach, his best was not in himself. They're world champions. You know why? Because their coaches, the staff, made them who they are. I'm sure Belichick will tell you the same thing. I'm sure he's a football genius, no doubt about it. But I guarantee you, his strength is in his connection with all the people around him. Nobody. Mother Teresa said, I can do some things you cannot do. Mother Teresa, she said, you can do some things I cannot do. Together, we can do great things. 
I submit that to you today. That's what Paul was describing in here. Have some things I can do. I don't have all the gifts. In fact, I, I'm one that believes nobody's got all the gifts. Well, some will disagree with that statement, but I mean, I, I, I'm not the full package. That's why my body's got a thumb and a finger and a toe. and That's why I need, if I had all of them, what would I need you for? Why would God put me in a body if I did see? But some people have the gift, one or more of these gifts, several of them. Other people's got different gifts. But you can you imagine what this church could do? No more people. And on a, on a good Sunday now, we, we run 130, 35 people. Can you imagine the difference we could make in this community, in this area, if everybody who came to this church found their grace and took their place? That's going to be my emphasis over the next few weeks' message. Find your grace. You know what grace is? Gift. Grace means gratuitous. It means gift. That God has given you. Why? So you could make a difference. So you could go to that wedding. So you could go to that party. So you could go to that gathering. And let the Jesus Christ shine through you. So you could reflect who he is. And make a difference. And what happened because of that? The disciples, many people believed on him. Why? Because he... Showed them who he was. We have that privilege to show the people who he is. So my message today is you go moon somebody. <laughs> Golly. I had to say something so you remember it. See, everybody's going to remember that today. And Tim says, Siebert, and I've got to teach that next Sunday. So, well, I want to see how you follow that up, my friend. And so let me let me get a p- plug in there for our, for our teachers. And so I appreciate it. He takes what I'm at. He don't preach necessarily from the notes. I don't even give him the notes. Sometimes I have, but most of the time I don't. But, see, he fleshes this out, and they go a little different perspective and a little different, uh, you know, angle and, and learn more from it and ask questions about it. So I'm sure you'll come next Sunday and ask some questions, and we'll see how, what kind of mooning we did. Just to clarify, let's go reflect who Jesus is. Be a reflection of the Son. Let's stand together.